Mm-hmm. I just All can't right. get the image out of Let's my head. Let's go to theme number two. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> All right. Theme number two, something okay. to learn. Uh, today was uh, Embroidery Club. Did you? I know it was cool. And I love that it? one. I love Cute that Cute design, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, in fact, Carly, so would you mind grabbing that? Oh, she's back at work. Behind. <laughs> See, this is what I'm here. There you go. You want me to bring this whole thing over? <laughs> this? There we towel. go. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Bring the whole thing over. Not not the Top patchwork. One. Not, not, yeah. There Specific we go. Specific Sorry. <laughs> So sorry, so sorry. I know. All right. Cute. So here we go. This, hmm, we learned yeah. to put this design on the tea towel. This is from uh, the Kimber Bell uh, fill in the blank program. And so with the purchase of a tea towel, uh, the the gray tea towels, you receive the design for free. And what's really fun is that this design can be both a Halloween design, but it also can be a fall autumn harvest ah. design mm. because you just leave off the jack-o-lantern jack face and now you just have a fall design. And then, you know, depending on what fabrics you choose for your appliques, it's going to lend itself more to that. So if you, no worries, Donna, she said, oh my, I forgot to watch embroidery clip. Uh, it's on our Facebook page, so you can go back and watch it at any time. So not a problem. It's the 9 a.m. one. We did it at mm -hmm. 9 and then we did it mm -hmm. at, again at 11, but the 11 o'clock was sewing. So if you're looking for a machine embroidery club, you want to watch the first one that was at 9 a.m. mountain time. And if you are into the sewing, then you want to watch 11 o'clock. Okay. Or both. Or you can watch both. Some Sometimes we do have people who mm -hmm. watch both, for sure. So um, anyway, so this was the design. It's so ever, uh -huh, th oh, that's cute. the applique's fabric. I know, isn't that ador so, uh, adorable? Adorable. 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 There you go. Cute. There we go. So what I decided to do today was I wanted to add a little bit of pizzazz to the bottom That's of the tea amazing. towel. Of course you did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look how cute that is. Just bring it up really one cute. more and notch. So this one is, um, yeah, just bring it up one more notch. And so what this does is it just adds a little bit of extra something something is what I called it today. Yeah. A little extra Darling. something something to you your know tea what towel. I love? And you can do it with any, any towel. My What's family that? will not want to dry their hands on something like this. <laughs> their dirty hands that no, they get fully washed. Me? Yeah. What's, what's the? There we go. Here's the velvet. picture of oh, it. Oh, the pumpkins of velvet. The pu yeah, the pumpkins of velveteen, nice. and it is also has uh, the flexi foam underneath yeah. it, which gives it that a little bit of poof it. and dimension. So here's and a there's picture. Glitter. And here's another picture because cute. you got to see it from both angles. Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Mm -hmm. This is why nothing which on side my phone is, better? is deleted. <laughs> I couldn't decide which one I liked better, so I just put them both up. Well, it there one's we for go. the righty and one's see? for the left. Exactly. So there we go. <laughs> so today I'm going to show you how to um, do this little patchwork. And you know what's fun is that this takes such little fabric. Scraps. Um, scraps. Scraps, mm -hmm. truly scraps. So, um, and a little bit of rec rack. I love it. All right. Um, Larry says it's amazing what rick rack adds to a project. Product oh, I know. Of time always on style. Absolutely. I, I also love it when they put the tassels on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Tassels it's along really the bottom cute. are fun. Now, the thing about adding rick rack is that sometimes we think of you just adding rick rack along the top and what you end mm -hmm. up seeing is the entire piece of rickrack oh right? well, i see what you're saying but on this top is underneath, of your fabric so it looks more like this is underneath so it does give like more that. the look of scallops you're only seeing half the rickrack but a lot of people aren't sure where do you sew the rickrack on in order mm -hmm. to make it so that all you see is scallops Let's yeah see. sometimes i get a little wompy mm -hmm. so i'm going to show you the trick to that and Donna says, I bet you'll have a kit. I am so sorry, Donna. I hate to disappoint. No kit on this one. Because How dare you? I know, I know. <laughs> because I just, I scraps. literally just scrubbed scraps. Oh, but you have, you have the. But the we do go with have it. the go with it kits if you want to do the design. And then you just add your rickrack to you your order. Add, yeah. Well, we don't have rickrack online. Oh, we don't? No. 
No. Who are we? Who are we? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Okay. So Bye. are you, you're not going to stay with no, us? No, no, you guys go do your thing. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Actually, I convinced her today she's going to come sub for me in two weeks for comments sold because I'm going to be out of town. And so Miss Carolisa is going to be in the house doing that, which is pretty cool. This was Can't look, a Halloween plant. <laughs> <laughs> my mom helped me Serious? take care of my plant while I was gone. She did a fine job. Don't tell her, but it's in the trash down at Bryn's desk. <laughs> uh oh. Oops. It didn't make it. Oops. It didn't make it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. See y'all. Bye, Carolisa. See Bye, Carolisa. That was fun seeing yeah, her today. Yeah, it was. She's a lot of fun. I miss her. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, you need to go with it kit for, what did she say? For, for the go with it kit. That's right. Oh, so if you are looking for the design itself, it is free with the purchase of the tea towels, the set of tea towels. They come in a set of two. And then we also, and it comes in a set of two. There's a polka dot and there's a stripe. I love them. Mm -hmm. so how many I have at home? A lot. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I bet. And then um, this was just um, done as a separate two that I just added on. Okay. So how is this done? Um, my original measurements, and don't worry, I have this in a handout for all of you today. That will be a free download. Nice. Okay. Um, my original measurements I did were based off of a 24 inch wide towel. Uh, this towel is 22 inches wide. Not a big deal. And rather than trying to mess around with everything, let me, let me fill you in on something. <laughs> Look, it's not a perfect square at the end. And Woo -woo! that is I okay. It. I love that it. is okay. And it wraps around to the back, but it's not a perfect square. Um, because it's okay for several reasons. First of all, nobody's going to look at this and say, whoa, wait a minute. That's not a perfect square, but in also my house, they better not. Exactly. Look at this. This is, you're, you're, not, you're not even going to see the back of it. Because it'll always hang that way. Totally. Absolutely. <laughs> On the floor. It looks really nice. There we go. Okay. Um, Linda said, thank goodness for the handout. I can pay better attention and not have to take notes. <laughs> exactly. All righty. So, the, my measurements that I did for you guys on the handout is based off a 24 inch towel. This is 22 inches. It's again, it's not a big deal. So what I did was I went through my stash, my scraps, right? And this one I'm doing kind of a fall theme. So the one I'm going to demonstrate on for you and oh, guess what I'm going to do today? Guess what? what? Guess what? What? I am going to make a twofer. I am going <gasps> to make this into oh, this you're side like a genius. Halloween genius. and this side is going to be fall. Why not? And autumn. Why not? Why not? Right? Nobody so uses, when it's Halloween time, it's going to be looking like this. When it's fall harvest time, genius. it's going to be on this. So that's what I'm that's I, what I'm going to do. Now that's, I have twice as many as exactly. I thought. Exactly. That's, <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. So what you do is you're going to take eight squares that are three and a half inches uh, in size, and you're going to sew them together using a half inch seam allowance, half inch. And then you want to open up your seams. I was now, looking at those seams and went, Chris, those are big seams. They are big seams. On purpose. I know. I don't know why. You're I just, awesome. I don't know. Because you can. I just did it because I can. That's right. And so, and then you want to open up your seams. If you don't end up opening up your seams, is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Okay. It is not the end of the world. I love sewing you can, like this. You can have the seams open. You can uh, push them to the side. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and sew all eight squares together. Okay. That's all you have to do there. Now, here comes the fun part, the rickrack. I love that color. Yeah. Debbie says that is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Mm hmm. Okay. Let's take a look. I know. Isn't it a pretty color? It is really pretty. Okay. So it has a just kind of a nice fallish look to it. I went with some blues, aquas, greens. I don't know. There's Rust. that's all you have to do. Rests. Yeah. So you're going to take your rickrack and let me make sure you can see that. All right. So Kyle, if we were to put it on like this, 
Now we certainly could, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. could just sew it on top. On top. That's fun. And it's fun. It's fine, right? But I like it better underneath, like you said. Mm -hmm. But I like it better underneath. I like just having a small part of it peeking out. Mm -hmm. So it really is up to you. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to show you how to sew it on you so that you just have the small scalp. Good. Showing. I want to know how to do that because okay. I, get, I get them a little bit wonky. Are you ever, do you ever wonder like, where do I put those, mm -hmm. those mountains and valleys, right? We have mountains and then we have valleys that go down and mountain and valley, mountain and valley. So um, if you put the mountain too far up, mm -hmm. what ends up happening is you get very, very little because you've got to now have a seam allowance. You're only going to get the very tippy tops of this. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it too far up. You don't want it too far down or else you're going to get um, mm -hmm. open holes and in that between the it. Look we want. And that's not the look we want. So what you do when adding the rickrack is all you have to do is you line up the mountains <sighs> to the top edge of your fabric. Uh, and then with your seam allowance, you're going to sew a straight line going all the way down the center mm. of the brick rack. Okay, so again, tops of the mountains are going to touch the top of your patchwork border. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then the it's easier seam. Than trying to chase it all over. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So I hope you see that right there. All right. You don't even need to pin it. It's okay. What? You don't need to pin it. You're just going to start here and start sewing. Again, you're going to sew straight down the center. All right. So let's go over to the sewing machine and we'll do that. I think I can Look, get you know over get it here. Set up just right. Well, let's see. Hopefully. There we go. Okay. So again, right now, all you're doing is you're creating your patchwork. All right. So I have the mountains lined up. And I'm noticing that my needle is way too far over to the left. So I'm just kind of repositioning my needle. I'm going to take my hand wheel and bring it towards me so that the needle goes down so I can see exactly where my okay, seam is going to go. You moved your needle rather mm -hmm. than your foot. You've got the foot right on the Correct. edge. Correct. Yeah, that's actually a really good comment um, that you noticed because um, I moved the needle because I want the edge of my presser foot to line up along the edge of my a lot of project. Sense. It's going to be so much easier to keep this centered. Okay, by doing that. So all I did was I moved over the needle. Again, the tops of your mountains are touching the very top edge of your patchwork. And notice I didn't pin, so I'm just stopping every few inches and going down the center. It doesn't matter what color thread you use, you're not going to see this. I would have moved my foot rather than my needle, which mm -hmm. that's so much easier. Definitely. Okay, there we go. So the first one is done. Can you see where the line is going? The seam line is just going straight down the middle. The tops of my mountains are touching the edge of the fabric. So then when I pull it out, and I'll get the iron here in a minute, but now you can see it like a scallop. Okay, I'm going to do the other side real quick. Let's grab this other piece. And you can do this with any size um, rickrack you want. Yeah, because your seam's going to be in the middle of the rickrack. Right, no so it doesn't matter. Yep. I'm imagining all the different things I can do that. Mm-hmm. 
I just think that little rickrack trim is just this nice little pop. Do you know what? I always wondered how they did those on bindings too. Oh, yep, same way. Oh, I like it. There we go. All right, it really is that simple. Now, let's take it one step further. I'm gonna move this around. Oops. And press it. Ooh, that is hot. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna give it a quick press to kind of set the seam here. All right. Then you do have to kind of play with it for a second to get it started. There we go. What will end up happening is that we will then stitch it onto the tea towel and we'll do a top stitch to do that. So that's okay. how this will all be held into place. Super easy. So you're just pressing it out. That's it. That is amazing. Now you have that scalloped border. Isn't that fun? All right, Kyle, let's take a look over here again and let's add it to the tea towel. So I'm going to do it opposite of my Halloween. So here's my Halloween and now I'm gonna do the other side be fall. So, in order to know that I have this straight, I'm going to actually line up now the, the mountain tops along the bottom along my seam line that is already done oh, on the tea towel. That's a great idea. Yeah. So that Why not I don't use it. I don't have to measure anything. Nice. So, I'm just lining this up right here, and I'm going to center this on the tea towel. You could certainly use pins if you wanted, but sometimes I find pins are a little too cumbersome. <laughs> so I'm just going to, again, the bottoms, let me make sure you can see that. The bottoms of the mountain tops are just lined up right along there. And I'm just going to continue playing with it, moving my, my piece as I sew. And all I'm doing is a simple straight stitch. Okay. Now you would use a color thread like, you know, I, I have white in right now. I would probably use maybe um, like a tan or something. Sure. But, and you're leaving that over the edge a little bit, right? Of your um, tea towel? Yes. I, yes. Thanks, Kyle. I am. Notice I am leaving it over the edge so that I can turn it on. on uh, I can turn it under, I should say. You know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to use the help of my blind hem foot. Uh, m almost every machine comes with one because the blind hem foot has this little flange going right down the middle. If I line up the edge of my uh, patchwork border with this, uh -huh. I'm going to get an absolute perfect top stitch. So I'm going to do that real quick. If you don't have one handy, it's okay. You can, you can eyeball it as well, but this makes it really, really easy. Okay, see how simple that was to do? You did it one-handed. I did do it one-handed. Wow. Amazing. All right, let's take a look. Let me get this Because yeah, you're not situated. going to stitch down your rickrack. No, I'm not oh. stitching on the rickrack. Oh, I'm actually, I'm top stitching on the patchwork border. So I noticed that my my the little flange on the presser foot is lined up 
against the fold of my patchwork. So if I follow that line, then I'm going to have a great looking top stitch, but my needle is in the wrong position. So I'm going to just shift it over. I love the fact that you can do that. Oh yeah. And I think I want it to go a little bit more. I'm bringing my hand wheel down towards me so I can get a better shot and see if that's where I want it to go. Yep, that's where I want it to go. All right, let's do this. So I always am going to start with this one first because this is the side that I'm lining up against the hem of the tea towel. Yeah, if you did the other side, you might not be at the right place. Mm -hmm. You see, Kyle, how that yeah. just, whoops, how about that? There we go. You that just, just rides. Slow and steady. Mm -hmm. It just rides right along there. I love, love this foot. I, I use it all the time for top stitching. I need to remember. That does look amazing. Okay, again, I'm just repositioning, making sure my mountains line up with the seam on the towel. What a quick, easy uh, Oh, abso absolutely, absolutely. Okay, there we go. And your so other one end side is, is done. My other end is passed, so you can see that. It kind of looks messy right there. But you can see the top stitch. Uh, let's see. You see that right there? Okay. And now that that's in place, I'll go do the other side. So I'm going to turn this around. Just kind of readjust this a little bit. Make sure everything's nice and flat. Press your foot down. There we go. Nice. See how easy this is? Make sure everything is tucked under. What a great neighbor gift. Welcome mm -hmm. someone into the neighborhood or anything. I, I love these. I, I do this a lot on tea towels, um, Christmas tea towels, Valentine's tea towels. You've got all the parties towels. to go to and you bring a... Um, you want to bring a little gift. hostess gift? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, there we go. Nice. Done. Uh, do you see a pair of scissors by chance over there? Okay, and that is finished. Now I'm going to just trim. Yeah, that's good. I'm just going to trim this up a little bit on the edge. Um, but still having it extend out by, oh, I don't know, quarter to a half an inch. So you can see it right there. And then all I have to do is fold over and fold over one more time and then top stitch that. Make sure and back stitch on that one. Okay, there we go. So you got a top stitch here, and I'm going to do Two. the same thing on the other side. And then I'm almost done. I like the idea of the two. The two what? The two ends, different holidays. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So again, I just fold this over towards the towel and bring it over one more time. And then I'm going to top stitch on that side. And it will catch the back. Do a back stitch and go forward. And back stitch. And it's that easy. It is Done. that easy. Call it good. Look, that's it.
So then I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to give it a final press. In fact, I'm going to use a little best press too. It's amazing what that does. Oh, love, love, love those sprays that just help everything just lay nice and flat. much better right wow. so there you go again make sure whatever um, colors you want to make sure are in the front that you're using them in the center part of it because that's the area that's going to show the most I love that orange if I were to do it over again I might put the orange in there more but that's what's going to show and now with that being done, I know exactly the area that I want to put my design in. And again, on this side, I did the Halloween design. On the opposite side, I'll do the fall design. Just it's the same exact design, but no uh, pumpkin face on it. And that's all there is to it. Yay. All right. <laughs> Let's head back over and I'll take a look at any questions that you might have and see what we can help answer. Okay. Let's see. Easy peasy. That's right, Kim. <laughs> Easy peasy. Uh, let's see. Megan asked, would you pre-wash the towel before embroidering applique to keep the letters from puckering after washing or the patchwork detail from getting bunchy? Missed beginning, so apologize if it was already discussed. Um, no problem, Megan. Uh, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I I am not a pre-washer. Are you a pre-washer? No. Not much. Um, there's a few cases where I make sure and pre-wash, especially if it's like a baby item, I'll pre-wash. Um, but with a, a towel like this, this is going to, for me, I felt like it's more of a decorative towel. And so I just, it's It'll not get something plenty that's of wash be later. Wa yeah. And it might not ever be washed. Yeah. Right. So I hope not, but you certainly could. You absolutely could. Um, Tina asked, how big are the squares? I started out with three and a half inch squares oh. and I did eight of them across. How you far to put up the design? Thin strips too. Yeah, I mean, Whatever you, you could, you absolutely, you could do like little one inch, one and a half inch strips and make them into one inch strips and then go. That would be kind of fun. That'd, That'd be, be really, really cute. cute. So Barbara asked, how far to put up the design? Hmm. I went about six inches up from the bottom of the tea towel. So it just depends on where you want your center to be. So here's a few thoughts. Um, let me bring this down again so that I can... Kind of point out a couple things to you so in the original um pattern to make the home uh on the kimberbell instructions what they have you do is they have you mark up five inches well five inches would be probably about right here and that would be the center of your design so your design would actually be down here um, because this was based off of not having something like this, right? So they marked up five inches. So what I did was I actually made my patchwork border first. Oh. And then I mm -hmm. went, okay, how far up do I want to go? So actually, if, if you're doing the same exact design and you're wondering how far up you should go, I based it off of six inches center. Center. Six okay. inches center from the bottom up to my center crosshairs are six inches or okay. six and a quarter inches. So um, I, at first I thought, oh, well, if it was five inches from here, I'll go five inches from here. But actually that wouldn't look very good. Your design would be way up here. So oh. I, I needed to compensate for that. So it's actually the center of the design ends up going six, six and a quarter inches. 
And it's, it's just so simple to do. And of course you can do this idea with any kind of design. And this is for both sewing or machine embroidery. Uh -huh. That's what you had this morning. Yep. This is what we did in embroidery club this morning. So let me get you back on here, Miss Kyle. <laughs> Let's see. What other questions do you have? Um, what size is the Rick Rack? Uh, I believe this one is a three. Oh, I want to say three eighths inch or maybe a half inch. I'm not for certain candy, but it's not the mini and, and it's, it's not, not the jumbo. jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> so it's right in between, <laughs> right in between. Okay. Let's see. Any other questions? Mm hmm. Marianne is asking, do you do the design before you put the squares and Rick Rock on and how far up do you do go the design? Hopefully I, I had answered that in this last one. I might not have seen your question earlier, so I apologize. But again, I, I try to keep, I try to do the patchwork first. So I know mm -hmm. for sure it's going to work. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then I add the design. So hopefully that helps. And it was about six, six inches, six and a quarter center. It'd be a bummer bottom. if you got your Rick Rack into your design. <laughs> it would. It would for sure. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. See if you have. Oh, yes. Hey, for Cheryl. sure. Jolene, that would be cute. <laughs> you could substitute a wreath for the pumpkin and make it Christmas. Oh, yeah, you certainly could. And another thing you could do, I was talking to Lisa about this uh, this morning during club. I said, this would be cute as you eliminate the, the pumpkin face and you make it into an apple with red. Oh, that'd and be cute. And then you could add just like a little green three-dimensional leaf on oh. there. And then it would look like an apple doesn't have to be a pumpkin right so or when it came be on that house's designs one of the house designs would be mm -hmm. darling absolutely yep okay mm -hmm -hmm. just kind of going through here um oh that would be fun cheryl asked could you do matching ends and use as a table runner on a small table that's, that's a, great a great idea, idea. really good. yeah so you could yeah why not actually instead of it just serving as a tea towel that would be a darling little table runner oh table yeah topper use the same same fabrics i love that that's a great idea okay donna couldn't find grippy on the website search grippy um, in the search bar, G R I P P Y. I talked about it yesterday. Oh, I'm like, did we use Grippy? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yesterday. Yeah. So there we go. Yep. There you go, Tana. It's a great way to use those crumbs to make a pretty towel. Mm -hmm. We got some of those lying around, right? <laughs> For sure. I just found my big tub of stuff that I was going to cut up into squares and get them all ready so I could make a, a scrappy quilt. Mm -mm. No. You I just not have to, to sew all the pieces onto each other. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Make a collage. There you go. There you go. Yeah, definitely um, use your blind hem foot where, whenever and wherever possible. You just have to, you know, move the needle position over. But, boy, I'll, I'll tell you, that is so slick. I was just able to just follow that. Which fold. one was that? Uh, the blind hem. Okay. Mm -hmm. The blind hem foot. So, there we go. All right. You know what I need to do? I just need to put on some of those videos and sew along with it. So I remember I have all the little mm -hmm. cool stuff. Definitely. To help me sew. Yeah, absolutely. I never think about that little. Oh, it's so true, flip. though. Uh, where did you and Kim learn to sew? Donna is asking. Um, you know, we're very much self-taught. Huh? Yeah. And just a lot of um, trial and error <laughs> and, you know, learning what works and what doesn't and yeah yeah i think that's, that's a lot of people mm -hmm. yep just just like all of a you a lot of I things learned. thrown at the wall <laughs> and a go. few choice words <laughs> maybe mm. <laughs> so cute scallop yeah it really is a cute way to do things for sure all right okay so i hope that helped oh here's a quick good question uh, what is the difference between a blind hem foot and the edge joining foot? They're very similar. 
very similar. Um, the I wish I had an edge joining foot here to show you the comparison. But basically, if you think of, let's see, let's think of this as your foot. All right, this is the foot. There we go. And both of those feet have a flange, a metal flange down the center. The difference, though, is that the blind hand foot actually has a crossbar going across this way. And the edge joining foot is fully open. Oh, okay. I know so what you get a clearer picture with the edge joining foot. I vote for that one. Mm -hmm. You definitely see things better, more clearly, where the blind hem foot has the, the bar that goes across. So either, either way, you know, you could try either way. So, all right. <laughs> That's right. Carol said, and try not to forget to move the needle back to center when finished. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have to worry about that with an edge joining foot, right? Mm -hmm. So, 